Let's talk crypto policy in D.C. Senator Warren praises SEC Chair Gary Gensler for her, his current actions and slams the crypto lobby. Taking it from the other side, we'll look at what the Blockchain Association has to say. We check in with Ron Hammond on a regular basis on what's happening in D.C. He has a new piece out now about the various confrontations happening in crypto policy right now and what he calls Season 4, the uphill battle. We'll take a deeper look at what's happening in D.C. and how lobbying associations like the Blockchain Association can make an impact as far as retail investors go and of course the businesses and enterprises trying to make an impact when it comes to cryptocurrencies here in the U.S. But if we haven't met before, my name's Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. On this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. Senator Warren, we know she is very anti-crypto, pals with Gary Gensler. She's been praising recent actions by the SEC and slamming the crypto lobby. This piece in uh, Coindesk, I think, highlights some of the most important things from her recent comments. Let's take a dive in. This just came out earlier today. Senator Warren praised the country's securities regulator and its chief, Gary Gensler's, efforts to police the crypto industry and called for lawmakers to give the watchdog the necessary resources and authority to keep things going. Gensler, who took charge at the SEC in 2021, has had to put the genie back in the bottle and bring the crypto ecosystem into regulatory compliance after President Trump's regulators allowed it to explode, she said in an interview with the American Economic Liberties Project. The SEC has worked to protect investors and prevented Bitcoin ETFs from hitting the market, said Warren, who's been a vocal critic of the sector, particularly of the impact crypto mining has on the environment. She praised the commission's enforcement actions against celebrity promoters like Kim Kardashian and exchanges like Coinbase for in alleged insider trading. Most importantly, she said, it appears the commission is still ramping up. That's why the industry is scared of a strong SEC and why it's spending millions of dollars each year lobbying to escape SEC oversight. Warren has been scrutinizing the collapse of crypto exchange FTX in November, which sent ripples to the industry and prompted regulators to increase their efforts to improve supervision. She has called for FTX founder Sam Bigman fried to be held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. The SEC should double down, she says, and use its tools to enforce the rules. And where the SEC needs more cops on the beat, then Congress needs to step up with the resources and new authorities that are needed to make sure the SEC can work at its full strength in every corner of the crypto market, she said. What do you think? Should the SEC have control over every corner of the crypto market, the entire space, and should they get more tools, more resources, more funding paid by taxpayers and more cops on the beat? Let me know what you think in the comments below. She continues here. Shady crypto players are lobbying hard in Washington, That uh, adding that the SEC has been loud and clear that crypto shouldn't get a pass to avoid longstanding laws that protect investors and market integrity. This is the right approach, she says. All this, despite the fact that Gensler himself has been publicly criticized for allegedly holding meetings with SBF, who of course at one time was the crypto darling in D.C. and certainly did contribute to many D.C. players when it came to their uh, political uh, aspirations and to their campaigns. But let me know what you think about all of this. Is this the right approach? I really want to know what you have to say. Just a quick reminder, if you need to secure your digital assets to make sure that they aren't lost or in the event of a collapse of an exchange like an FTX held up in a bankruptcy hearing, uh, make sure to check out the Nano S Plus by Ledger, DeFi, and NFT friendly. It's uh, back in stock, link down below. Now, Ron Hammond of the Blockchain Association put out this opinion piece that is a really good summary of where crypto regulation has gone over the past few years and policy efforts. He says this would make for great TV. Why isn't this a show already, he asks. That's a common question on Capitol Hill when it comes 
to crypto policy, considering the zany characters, not just in crypto, but also in politics, bombastic lines of questioning at congressional hearings, gaffes, which turn into meme tokens, and constant media friendly, crypt or media frenzy, crypto is a policy realm unlike any other. The topics are complex, the news cycle is relentless, and the challenges to solve are daunting which is why crypto policy is not for the faint at heart. The stakes couldn't be higher, and Congress and Crypto Season 4 is shaping up as the most consequential yet. In describing this show, it's helpful to break down its previous seasons. So he takes some of the previous years up to this point and lumps them up into various so-called seasons, War Crypto Policy to be a television show. So season one, he says, would have been 2016 to 18 and would have taken place in WeWork offices with stars as lobbyists at Coin Center, the Blockchain Association, and so on. For a relatively new industry, those two organizations have been around the longest. The handful of tech and privacy-focused policy wonks would spend their days strategizing how to break down the complex topic of crypto to members of Congress who are double their age and Capitol Hill staffers who are half it. Now, season two would have been 19 to 21, taking place on the heels of the announcement of Facebook's Libra project and ending with the infrastructure fight episode. During the climax, the industry rallies together to attempt to defeat a crypto tax provision tucked into Biden's hallmark legislation, the bipartisan infrastructure bill. The cast grows into an ensemble, and each faction splinters the ecosystem further. Now, season 3, 2022, what we saw in the last year with new players, none more important than SBF, a personality so large, he's only known by his officials, painting himself as a savior for the industry and aggressively positioning himself in front of Congress and regulators in every corner of D.C. In the end, though, it turns out he's not the white knight, but the villain of that season, the collapse of FTX and the ensuing contagion would wipe out several companies, leaving one-third of all U.S. policymakers frustrated and embarrassed for having taken donations from an alleged fraudster. But now we get to where we are today, season four, 2023, shaping up to be the most memorable yet. With drama in both the speaker's race and crypto policy, the industry's at its lowest point in the history of the show. As the damage done by FTX's collapse continues to reverberate, relationships are tarnished, skeptics are emboldened, like Senator Warren that we just looked at. More than ever, and in some cases, crypto is seen as politically toxic. Divided control in Congress provides opportunities for the industry, but it will take dedicated negotiations, education, and political power to move anything along. These are familiar challenges. Every step is a brutal, bruising slog, but that's what makes it so fun to watch. So lots of characters in this show. You'd see Rep McHenry, now chair of the House Financial Services Committee, who's expressed interest in market structure legislation and parameters around stablecoin issuers. Dealing with those two issues may garner a hefty amount of support on both sides of the aisle. In the other corner, though, you have Senator Sherrod Brown, McHenry's polar opposite when it comes to crypto as chair of the banking committee. He's overseen many of the conversations you and I have listened into together when we streamed those hearings live over the course of last year. Lots of other key characters, though. You've got French Hill, who's a former Treasury employee, now a representative from Arkansas, Rhodes Scholar Jim Himes from Connecticut, who is anti-crypto. These members and several others are seen as some of the sharpest minds in Congress, and their backgrounds exist in traditional finance. While they approached crypto in the early years with pronounced skepticism, they've gravitated towards issues that blend the two realms, such as regulation for stablecoins. Perhaps most importantly, they have the ears and respect of their conference and can assist their colleagues like McHenry and Brown to move legislation across the finish line. Season 4 might be the most compelling and substantive yet, but as Season 3 or 2022 taught us, don't come to Washington for attention or make it about yourself. The industry is more than one man or personality. It's an ecosystem of individuals who fought through the noise and now are working and communicating together. 
We talk openly about policy proposals within our communities on Twitter, engage in debates on Discord, and advocate for our digital rights in a metaverse. It's not your standing lobby, standard lobbying world for anyone, but for those who like a challenge, believe in the potential of the technology to make an impact on society, and embrace the day-to-day -day media frenzy that's defined this industry we welcome you to the show, he writes, and it truly is a show. The drama that has existed in the crypto space over the last few years has been intense. We've seen a lot of players come and go, big companies arise, and subsequently collapse. And of course, in the middle of all of this, you have Chair Gensler, who's been weaseling his way into various aspects of the crypto space, trying to gain control as he targets that treasury position, Secretary of the Treasury, a, a coveted position when he's left, lusted after for years. So do let me know what you think in the comments below. How will this year shape up and how will we see things play out? Will the Ripple case see its conclusion? And will we finally get some clarity for XRP as an asset? Will that clarity carry forward to other assets or will the waters continue to be murky? I'm curious to know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks so much for spending some time with me. Drop a like if you found any value here in this video. It helps channel a ton and helps me keep you informed. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.